Hi, everybody. Good, good morning, almost afternoon. Um, I, I'm here to speak to you about blogging today, but listening to everyone speak before me, I think uh, I'm in the hobbyist kind of part as opposed to the expert blogging. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I got started blogging. Uh, I do it part-time. I don't do it professionally. But I do it as part of um, shoring up what I do as a writer. So I wanted to talk to you guys just about how it's possible to blog but not dedicate like all your time to blogging because I think we all have busy lives and sometimes it's hard to, to do everything at once. So I was just going to start with, um, I started blogging a long time ago after I graduated from college. Uh, I was really bored at work at the Wall Street Journal. So I started a personal blog. And initially, you know, I just went on Blogspot, just made up a name, and I thought I was only going to be blogging to my friends and my family members. And then it just really got kind of out of hand because so many people started responding to my blog. Uh, just when you link to other people's blogs, they find you, and then it just goes from there. And um, that's when I got my first taste of, of blogging for validation. You know, you blog to get to start that conversation, but you're blogging because you want people to leave comments on your blog and, and talk to you and you talk back to them. But with a personal blog, there's a pitfall to that in that you, uh, you start blogging things that maybe people wouldn't be comfortable with you sharing. So I found that the more I blogged about personal things, the more people came to my site. So that was fine if it was just my life, but you know, I stopped doing that as much when I got married a few years ago because, you know, I have to respect like my family's wishes in terms of what I share with the world. Um, but I mean, there's positives also to having a personal blog in that you meet a lot of people who are supportive of you if you're going through a hard time or who are congratulating you if something great happens, like when I had my daughter um, in May. So. So, and also one of the positives of having a blog, uh, whether it be personal or professional, is that you don't have to be famous. You can just be anybody. Sitting in this room, you can just start blogging, and you could get traffic to your site from a variety of ways. And I guess we'll talk about that at the workshop. But it's a, it's a great way to connect with people. Um, and you meet wonderful people also. So I started, the evolution of my blogging started a couple of years ago when I started uh, my professional blog. And as you can see, like, this was my personal one on Blogger. Then I moved up to WordPress, which I think was an improvement. It's just an easier interface for me to use and a cleaner interface. Um, and on this pers professional blog, I post, like, the articles I write. Uh, and it also has my Twitter feed on it, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this blog comes in handy because, you know, in this age when everyone Googles you before they even meet you, this gives me an opportunity to establish myself, my presence, speak for myself. And if people Google me, hopefully this is one of the first things that come up instead of, you know, some random link about something I did in college or, or what somebody else wrote about me or something like that. So this is a site people can go to if they want to know about me and it's, it's information that I control. Uh, so this comes in handy in that regard. So even if you aren't a blogger, but in your professional life, like you need to go beyond a business card, it's a good idea, I think, to start a blog. Um, and from there, uh, this has my resume, this has my, my articles on it. I started microblogging, which is in the form of Twitter. And I run at Doha News which is like a public service that I just started um, earlier this year, it, just keeping people up to date what's going on in Doha. And I just do that as something I want to do. Um, I'm not paid by anyone. Nobody pays me to tweet anything in specific. Um, and I love it because I, get, I met so many people in Doha this way, and I've learned so much about what's happening in Qatar. And I think it's something that ICT Qatar, should, we should talk about with them in terms of there is no central website we can go to to find out what's going on in this country. And there's a lot going on, and, and people always complain that there isn't anything happening. But that's because it's really hard to find that information all in one place. Um, so the advantages of tweeting, uh, if you don't have time to start a blog, for example, it's great because it's 140 characters, and you can do it anytime. You can do it anywhere. You can, you can tweet on your cell phone. You can tweet on your laptop. 
Um, I mean, Qatar is very connected. Wireless is in all the parks and at the Corniche. And, you know, with my daughter, I can hold her in my lap and, and tweet, or I can eat lunch and tweet, or when we're walking outside, we can, whatever I want to say. Like, uh, recently I went to, uh, I had an experience at the hospital because my daughter was sick, and I could tweet, okay, this hospital is better than this hospital, just in our experiences. And that was one way to share with people what's going on uh, in Qatar, because people are always looking for stuff like that. Like, okay, where do I go? We're all... Most of us are expats here, I think, that follow me on Doha News. So. But then also I have a, a private Twitter account that I think some of you had tried to follow, but I won't accept your request. Follow me on Doha News, but my private account I just keep my from my friends and family. Keep in touch with them because they're far from here. Um, and then also I'm a Global Voices contributor. And Global Voices Online basically it curates the news, it curates the conversation, and it brings um, into focus the conversations that are going on in, in places that the media might not necessarily talk about. So this post example was a cartoon that ran in a local newspaper and people were really upset about it. Uh, they thought it was in bad taste. So I just basically followed what the blog said and what followed what the tweet said and, and came up with a, an article just breaking it down, what people were talking about. So that's another way to use blogs as a as a way to gauge the sentiment in a region. Um, so those are just the things I do. Um, that's all I really wanted to say. I, I guess it was shorter than I thought. But uh, I mean, I'm excited to see all the women in the audience. And I'm sure a lot of you have full-time jobs that had nothing to do with blogging. But I think uh, Qatar can be a lonely place sometimes. And it's really hard if you don't make a real effort to go out and meet people who aren't in your circle already. And I think the online hemisphere is a really good way to, to start that. Um, I've met a lot of people uh, on Twitter who I hopefully will meet in person today. Just based on your tweets, I think a lot of you are here who I follow on Twitter and who follow me. So, um, so that's all I have to say. Uh, tips for the new people, we can talk about at the workshop. But for example, with Shabina.net, you can start a WordPress or something, and then you can, for $8, buy a domain name. So for $8 a year, I have Shabina.net, and that's a lot easier to get to than Shabina.net, or Shabina921.wordpress.com. So we can talk more about that later. Um, and that's it. Thank you.